Okay, how about a quick tutorial on a damper operator or a zone motor? This one, the Honeywell. There you go. <clears throat> you can see on the side it's closed and it's open. We've got a little uh, set screw that clamps to the zone damper and opens and closes it with the motor. Um, you see here we've got a doorbell transformer hooked up to the meter showing 28 volts. And what we'll do is attach these alligator clips to the motor. And we'll watch this thing drive closed. It's in the open position now. They spring open and drive closed. And there it goes. We're not going to get into the adjustments, the end, end adjustments, but you can you can play with these this X here and, and adjust the open and closed positions, but for now we'll just leave it set default, wide open, wide closed. So with power to the zone motor it opens. Of course I said that backwards. It drives closed and springs open. So it is driven closed. If we remove an alligator clip and watch it spring open. There it goes. This is a, this is a zone motor that I've just repaired. Uh, I took two, two broken ones <clears throat> and use parts from each to make one good one. Now we'll look at some of the reasons they fail. Here is one of them that I got parts from. This one I used the ring gear. The teeth on this on this ring gear were good, but the spring was broken. So it would open, but it wouldn't spring closed. So that's a bad. This is junk. But I saved it to show on the camera. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we've got another one here. We're going to try this. I'm not. I haven't haven't tried it before. This one's got a good spring. And I don't know if you can see those teeth. Those teeth are eight off. And I'm not sure that we can't just flip that gear 180 degrees and use the other side of it, which which would save a bunch of money because these things run a lot, probably over a hundred dollars for the customer. Um, so we're going to tear this thing apart and see if we can't flip it 180 degrees and, and have a good good one for another couple of years. This one probably lasted three or four years before it ate up those teeth, but that's, that's pretty bad. And we got another gear here. Not as bad, but it's... Let's find the bad spot. Yeah, here we go. A small section. So we'll pull this thing apart and see if we can't flip it 180 degrees and make it good for another couple of years. Okay, here's how these come apart. And you see right here, got a little hole, a slot with a piece of metal that sticks through it and then is twisted. All we got to do is straighten out that piece of metal so it lines up with the slot and this one. getting close and this one I should just pop apart of course it wants to fight there we go very seldom does the motor go bad. It's always, it's always the teeth. So here's what we're left with. Uh, what we're going to try and do is, let's see if we can't zoom in. Uh, there's a spring. You can see the shiny part right here. That's a spring in that hole. 
If we pull this wheel off and turn it 180 degrees, it'll go in that hole. And hopefully we won't have the bad section of teeth mated with the drive wheel, which is right there, somewhere in there. It's dirty and greasy, but like I say, these things last a few years and, and, and eat the, most of the time, they eat this nylon gear. And If it doesn't eat that gear, well, this is the this this one was the first one I've seen with the broken spring. So we used the good gear from this one on a on another one, and we'll try flipping this gear 180 degrees. Well, let's do it on camera. Let me zoom out again. This just pulls right off. Of course, it's spring loaded, so it's going to pop. All right, we're using this hole. We're going to rotate it 180 degrees to this hole. That's where it's going to line up, but it's going to take some doing off camera to line up the spring that goes in in there. So let me shut you off. <clears throat> we'll come back when we got that lined up. All right, that's the spring in the hole. We're all lined up and 180 degrees off from where it was the first time. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put the uh, the motor half back together and uh, let's see, here's the motor half. We'll put these back together, tweak them a couple degrees so they won't come apart, and then we'll do a test run on them, see if they open and close properly. There's a tab through the hole and twisted another one. There's only three. There's the assembly back together. Put the, the wires back through the grommet here. Of course they won't fit. Not on camera anyway. There we go. And what we'll do what was that noise? We'll put this set screw where are we at here? Put this set screw in here so we can watch it work. And put the cover on so we know when it's open and closed. is open, down is closed, hook up our 24 volts, uh, I hear clicking, and you can see now this thing started to move. Usually what happens when these things are stripped, they get to a certain point and then they go click, 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 click. And they sit there and make that sound all the time. But it looks to me like we went all the way open. And see, it springs closed. So now we got two emergency repaired zone motor opera zone motors or damper operators okay so let's recap out of three broken zone motors we have one good motor or part two repaired damper operators functional one piece of junk with a broken spring and one, uh, well, it's 50% uh, 
uh, nylon gear. The one one side is stripped, the other side is good. So we'll save that with, with the, the good motor in case we run into more broken springs. Um, but that's, oh shoot, probably nearly $200 in savings.